have you been ripped off, paid somebody a lot of money, but only found that you're left holding an empty bag and now don't know where to turn? Or perhaps you're thinking about getting more active in your community or your neighborhood, but you feel you need some leadership skills. And there is an organization that is often thought of as being controversial, but its members believe they are defending our rights. A look at those subjects begin right now. Joining us, Sheriff Robert Pickell, January 1st, 1998, appointed to the office. You brought a number of different innovative programs. One of the things we'd like to look at is what you're doing today in consumer protection. Let's go back five, six years ago. Somebody gets into a problem with a consumer issue uh, over construction or something along those issues. What could they do? Nowhere to go. Normally it fell through the cracks. Uh, you see, law enforcement agencies are geared up to work murder, criminal sexual conduct cases, robberies, burglaries. But police, they don't have the manpower nor the expertise to investigate consumer protection type crimes. You know, this uh, summer and the spring season usually brings a lot of, I think you refer to them as gypsies that move into the area wanting to do some sort of home improvement jobs. Did we see that happen this year? Yeah, we did, Mel, and we saw too much of it. And uh, the people from, uh, the people who were hurt the most were the uh, older people. They seem to be more vulnerable. Uh, the first part of your question, uh, roof repair, house construction, driveway, uh, horrible a number of complaints and that's where our main focus was this summer and often when you're talking about this you're not talking a hundred or two hundred dollars oh no we had one case uh, of an elderly woman 91 years old that was ripped off for ninety five hundred dollars now ninety five hundred dollars is a lot of money to anyone but when you're 90 91 years old it's almost all of your savings and uh, fortunately our consumer protection service we were able to get it resolved. We got about $8,500 of our money back, plus we prosecuted the individual, and the individual is now in prison. Judge Nethercutt uh, gave him a number of years in prison. But you know, I think the thing that I want to do, and what I should do is to tell everybody out in your viewing audience, is that these cases are put together by volunteers. They're not paid county employees. They're people like you and me, uh, doctors, uh, we have dentists, people that serve in this capacity. It's all volu uh, volunteer work, and it's been very successful. The last case that we did, that was it was $150,000. That's a lot of money. Oh, a lot of money to anyone, and again, it was a construction, house construction uh, ripoff. Does that seem to be pretty much the main target, something to do with home maintenance? Home maintenance uh, seems to be a lot of it during the spring, summer, and fall. Uh, there are other types of crimes, but we have people on staff that deal strictly with these types of uh, frauds where people are defrauded. And who's defrauded more often than anyone else? The elderly, senior citizens. And I can't tell you why. I, don't, I haven't been able to figure it out yet, but they just seem to be more vulnerable. And I think because when they were growing up, you did business on a handshake. There were no contracts. Your word was everything. And that's the way a lot of these seniors are still operating today, and they're being ripped off. Uh, on the other hand, too, some cons can be very believable. Oh, listen, I'll tell you. Years ago, I was a victim of a, of a scam. You? Tell me who hasn't. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, again, the elderly are the most vulnerable, but we have complaints from school teachers. We have, we've had complaints from doctors, lawyers. No profession or no age group or different type of people are immune from these swindles. These guys, these people that go out and scam, swindle, and scheme, they're the best. And I'll tell you, when they come in and they sell, they could sell you the Brooklyn Bridge, most of them. Again, are we, are we looking mostly at things to do with, with home improvement or home maintenance? Is, does home this seem to be the largest Home involved? improvement, home maintenance, and uh, almost every single one of them are not licensed contractors. And uh, if I could give any admonition today to homeowners out there, you know, don't do business with someone that knocks on your door uh, and says you have a faulty roof, you have a, a bad, uh, badly cracked driveway. 
do business with local businesses, people that are operating in this town, that they're here as a full-time business. Stay away from the gypsies, the people that, you know, the fly-by-nights, the people that are in here today and gone tomorrow. And when you have your people look at this, is it sometimes a matter not where it may be a straight, you know, easy to determine con or fraud, but do your people end up finding out it's a dispute over whether the quality of the uh, product is, is what it should be and get into some gray areas? Yeah, th it does. And what we're there to do is to resolve. We try to mediate. Now, when we see crimes that are committed, like with a 91-year-old, 92-year-old woman, we prosecute. We, we arrest, we go to the prosecutor, we get a warrant, we prosecute. But a lot of it is simple mediation, problems in communication people that didn't understand. The business person thought he represented one thing. Well, I'm talking about when they're legitimate businesses on a local level. And we get most of those resolved. 95% of them are resolved because the business people are here yesterday, today, and they want to